Hi there. This is a topic video for Year One Microeconomics, focusing on the production possibility frontier. The PPF is a combination of two products, could be goods, could be services, uh, that shows the maximum output combinations using all available factors of production efficiently. Let's consider in this example a business that could be supplying pizza or could be producing sugar. And A, B and C are combinations that lie on the production possibility frontier. Now those combinations are efficient output combinations because they lie on the existing PPF. All of the available land, labour and capital resources are being utilised efficiently. In contrast, a combination shown by point F is not yet attainable. It lies beyond the PPF and uh, in a few minutes we'll think about ways in which we could possibly reach combination F. Of course it would require the PPF to shift outwards. Combinations uh, labelled D and E lie within the PPF and we call those inefficient combinations because not all resources are being either fully utilised or they're being used in an, an inefficient way. So we could move, for example, from point E to point B and end it with more output of sugar and a greater output of pizza, which for most people would be probably good news. So just a quick word on the PPF and economic efficiency. Any combination of, for example, consumer or capital goods that lie inside the PPF, they happen when resources are either unemployed or being used inefficiently. Combinations of goods and services that lie outside the PPF are unattainable at the present moment. And to get there, we'd need either an increase in the supply of factor resources or higher efficiency, productivity, or perhaps improvements in the state of technology. Those will be factors causing an outward shift in the PPF. And trade between nations, trade and exchange, also potentially allows uh, consumers in a given country to consume beyond a nation's own PPF. Producing more of both goods, assuming they're goods that give positive private or social utility, will improve economic welfare and we call it a gain in allocative efficiency. Now let's move on to look at the idea of the PPF and opportunity cost. Examiners are extremely keen that you understand how we can use the PPF to explore opportunity cost. Well, opportunity cost is the cost of a choice <clears throat> measured in terms of the next best alternative that is given up or sacrificed. In our example, we're increasing the output of cotton by 100 units, uh, moving from point A to point B on the PPF. That involves sacrificing 40 units of wheat. So the opportunity cost of employing more resources into cotton is expressed in terms of the output or the supply of wheat that we have to sacrifice. And in this case, 100 extra tons of cotton involves sacrificing 40 tons of wheat. So the opportunity cost is four tenths of a ton of wheat for each extra ton of cotton that we produce. That's how we show the basic opportunity cost idea. However, of course, the, the shape <coughs> of the PPF is important. <clears throat> And uh, the nature of this curve is there to illustrate diminishing returns. Let's have a look at how this works. So, but don't forget, A, B and C are on the production possibility frontier, so we are being efficient. The question is how we're allocating the resources between wheat and, co and cotton. So with diminishing returns, the marginal extra output of cotton goes down as more resources are allocated to it. As you can see, as we go from A to B to C, our output of cotton is going from 300 to 400, but then only from 400 to 480. It's becoming harder to increase the output of cotton. And uh, to get there, we're having to sacrifice more units of wheat. So the result is that the opportunity cost measured in lost wheat output increases. So diminishing returns... Uh, help to explain the shape of the production possibility frontier as drawn in this diagram. Not every PPF is a curve. Sometimes you can have a straight line PPF. Let's explore that for a second or two. So if we have a straight line PPF, that suggests that factors of production are substitutable. 
with no loss of productivity. In our example here, we have output of consumer goods on the y-axis, could be a car, for example, and an output of a capital good, let's say a computer, on the x-axis. <clears throat> and as we move down the PPF, the opportunity cost will stay the same. So if the PPF is a straight line, if it's a linear PPF, then the marginal opportunity cost of switching resources, in this case between consumer and capital goods, is going to be constant. The marginal opportunity cost will be constant. An example there is that the marginal cost of extra 15 capital goods as we move down the curve is 30 consumer goods. In other words, two consumer goods per extra capital good. So a linear PPF has a constant marginal opportunity cost. Let's think now about how the PPF can move, shift outwards. In our example here, the PPF is shifted out from PPF 1 to PPF 2. This means, of course, that if we are producing 60 consumer goods, instead of, for example, being able to produce 25 capital goods, perhaps we can now produce 42. We can now produce more capital goods for any given level of output of consumer goods. And lots of factors shift the PPF out. But the crucial point is, in this case, that an improvement in technology, uh, which has been available to produce capital goods, uh, has led to an outward shift in the PPF. After the shift, more capital goods can be supplied for each level of output. An improvement, I hope you can see, in economic welfare. So what causes the PPF to shift outwards? Let's focus on five key possible uh, causes of an outward shift. Firstly, if factors of production become more efficient, if, for example, the output per worker employed increases or the output per worker hour increases. This increases production for each unit of input used in production. Second cause could be better management of factor inputs. If we can improve the quality of the management in businesses, we can reduce wasted resources and we can also improve quality as well as quantity of production. The PPF also tends to shift out if we have more resources available. For example, investment might lift the stock of capital and inward migration, perhaps, could increase the available supply of labour. PPF also is linked to innovation and invention, so developing new products, new resources, and crucially, uh, finding better ways to, to make a good or service. We call that process innovation. So businesses that become process innovation efficient can become much more productive over time. And also land, let's not forget to the factor of production of land. So the discovery of and the commercial extraction of new natural resources, uh, that will drive an increase in productive potential. So those are the key factors that cause the production possibility curve to shift outwards. Uh, here's an interesting evaluation question. Can the production possibility frontier shift inwards? And the answer is yes. Indeed, for some countries, uh, some extreme um, events can have severely damaging effect on their production capabilities. So, for example, countries that are vulnerable to and affected by severe natural disasters, drought, floods, earthquake or tsunami, they can have devastating human costs as well as economic costs. PPF can shift inwards because of the destructive effects of civil war and embedded political conflict that can sometimes last for many, many years. There might be, for example, outward migration of labour, the so-called brain drain effect. So a nation might suffer depopulation as many of its younger, more skilled workers perhaps decide to leave. And it could be the case that productivity starts to fall. It doesn't necessarily have to rise every year, uh, particularly, especially if a country doesn't invest enough in creating new capital goods. If workers are operating with uh, capital machinery and equipment which is becoming very old and technologically obsolete, uh, subject to frequent breakdowns, for example, then productivity can suffer. A good example of this would be a, a country affected by a poor infrastructure, so power blackouts, uh, outages, 
and uh, all kinds of productivity uh, effects caused by congestion in transport systems and what have you and delays in logistics so can a PPF shift inwards yes it can just want to make a quick distinction in our topic video today between resource de depreciation and resource depletion so both of these factors can be negative for a country's PPF resource depletion is when your existing resources become less productive uh, because of wear and tear and age so machinery can depreciate over time skills if they're not used can atrophy so for example people who are suffering from long-term unemployment their productivity and their employability may suffer the longer they're out of work buildings clearly deteriorate just consider old hospitals and schools and the increasing cost of maintenance and basic infrastructure can become subject to capacity limits and breakdowns uh, just think for example points failures on, on tracks and things in the railway system so resources do depreciate but resources can also deplete and this is a key cause of an inward shift of the PPF so people can leave a country we call that human capital flight factors of production can be wiped out by natural disasters or by man-made problems such as deforestation or grazing of common land and capital can be scrapped businesses that go bust for example in a recession or even worse a depression so it's interesting to make a distinction between resource depreciation and resource depletion both are negative for a country's PPF another aspect of the PPF is showing economic recovery the upturn phase of the economic cycle well normally if we're in a recession we would typically be at point E where a combination of capital and labor goods that lies well within the production possibility frontier so in a recession for example unemployment will be high and many businesses will be operating with underutilized uh, capital resources so if the economy recovers we'll tend to move closer towards the PPF for example a movement from point E to point F that involves a fall in spare capacity we're still within the PPF but it means that resources are being more efficiently and intensively utilized and finally a look at how we can show long-term economic growth using the PPF in our example here the PPF is shifted out from PPF 1 to PPF 2 and we can move from combination E for example to a combination F where both and more of both capital goods and consumer goods are being produced that is an increase in productive potential that is an increase in a country's productive capacity uh, because it means we can now supply more of both goods and to an economist that is essentially uh, economic growth it's a sustained increase a sustained increase in a country's productive potential uh, this is where you can bring your micro and your macro together so if a country employs successful supply side policies that will help to bring about an outward shift to the PPF great chance for example to put a PPF diagram into an essay on supply side economics so we've covered a lot haven't we? in the last 15 minutes or so we've covered uh, lots of different aspects of the PPF the factors that cause it to shift opportunity cost economic growth diminishing returns resource depletion and resource depreciation there's lots to cover hopefully uh, that you've uh, found this useful always go back and press the pause button if you want to jot down some diagrams or some key terms loads more resources on our youtube channel of course and also on the tutor website thanks for joining us today hope to see you again sometime soon